Tomorrow is going to be a game changing day for the stock market in 2023. We are going to get the inflation report that comes out tomorrow at 8.30 in the morning. And depending on how this report comes out, it is going to dictate Fed policy. It is going to give the markets a perception of a soft or hard landing. You're going to get a lot of new information tomorrow coming with the CPI. After all, it is the first inflation report of 2023, and it's the first inflation report in a couple months now that you're actually expecting inflation to have went back up. Now, on one hand, I could sit here and make a bullish case to you guys, and I could say, well, the bond yields are hitting a six-week low. That means investors are actually expecting a softer CPI print. But at the same time, I could say, well, the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland is expecting a higher CPI print than what the markets are expecting, and so on and so forth. There's been a lot of warnings in which we'll talk about both sides of this equation and what this could do to the broad markets, to your investments, and to your money. Guys, let's get into all of this information. If you guys find value out of this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. So first things first, guys, we're going to go over the broad markets expectations for inflation, just the raw numbers that markets are expecting. So 8.30 in the morning, you guys can see right here, it's going to be a major, major catalyst. And before we actually talk about those expectations, just to show you guys how big this is going to be, the biggest drops, or I should say single day drops and single day rallies in 2023 were CPI days. For an example, September 13th, you got a hotter than expected inflation report for the month of August. The S&P fell 4.3% and the NASDAQ fell 5.2% that day. Whereas the November 10th inflation report, the S&P rallied 5.5% and the NASDAQ rallied 7.3%. These were the single biggest drops and pops any day in 2022 and it was based off of the cpi report now i think this whole this one holds a little bit more relevance just because it's the first inflation print for 2023 and we kind of don't know what to expect from the fed on one hand they're saying they're going to raise uh rates potentially higher than five percent meaning that terminal rate you've heard a lot of terminal rate discussions uh over the last week or so where fed members have said maybe the terminal rate's gonna have to be higher especially if inflation goes back up and economic conditions do not soften enough so on one hand you got that going on and on the other hand potentially if this report shows inflation continues to come down well maybe we get looser policy maybe the fed doesn't have to raise rates higher than five percent and at that point that would be a good thing right markets are kind of getting comfortable with like five and a half percent for the terminal federal funds rate after these fed speakers have been talking and that is all represented in the bond market now back to the actual numbers that we are expecting for cpi the headline inflation rate year over year we are expecting 6.3%. Last month was 6.5%. The core inflation rate year over year, we're expecting 5.4%. Last month's reading was 5.7%. It's almost a guarantee that the year over year numbers are going to come down. So that's not even as important. Uh, it really, I don't think it's going to cause the markets to drop or pop a lot. The year over year does not matter. Simplest way to put it. The core inflation rate month over month and the inflation rate, the headline CPI rate month over month, those are the important ones. So for the core inflation rate month over month, last month's reading was 0.4%. You are expecting 0.3%. So a deceleration from last month or, or from December, however you want to think about it. The headline inflation rate month over month, you're expecting 0.4%. 4%. Last month's reading was 0.1%. Now, let me object to you guys, just my personal opinion. I think it's going to be hard to see the headline inflation rate go up 300% month over month, but the core inflation rate to go down 25% month over month. I think those numbers just don't make a lot of sense to me. If the headline inflation rate is going to go higher by that much, I think it's at least going to keep the core CPI neutral, if not potentially 25 or 50% higher as well, because ultimately food and energy input prices going higher, right? If, if you're a restaurant owner 
and you're making burritos or you're making uh, whatever the hell you're making and your food prices are going up, which would be represented in headline CPI. Well, aren't you going to raise prices? And those price raises is going to be represented more so in the core CPI, right? And that's just an example. You could use this for commodities, for gasoline. All businesses need some form of gasoline. Typically, when import prices go up and it costs more to make a product or service, the prices for those products and services to the end customer tends to go up as well. So long story short, I have a hard time believing we're expecting headline CPI month over month to go up so much and expecting core CPI month over month to actually go down. Hard time believing that, but hey, we'll see. And the month over month numbers are really the only ones that are going down to matter now let's get into the bullish uh part of this video because who doesn't like to hear the bullish part before you get the bad news now this says wall street equity indexes were up one percent on monday while u.s treasury yields fell from an almost six week high as investors bet that key u.s economic data due out on tuesday would show inflation is easing the u.s bureau of labor statistics is scheduled on Tuesday to release January's Consumer Price Index CPI data, which is expected to show how effective Federal Reserve policy tightening has been in taming inflation so far. And it goes on to say that the stock market has uh, fallen, you know, a little bit since where we were at uh, just, you know, a couple days ago, which granted, they posted this article earlier in the day, and you've seen a pretty big rally uh, throughout the day today. Now, in quote, Quotes, investors are posi positioning themselves ahead of what they believe will be a favorable inflation report, which could trigger an upward move in equity prices, said Sam Stovall, chief investment strategist at CFRA Research in New York. Earlier this month, Fed Chair Jerome Powell said for the first time that, quote, the deflationary pro or disinflationary process is underway. He reiterated the point in the past week, saying in an interview that, quote, the disinflationary process, the process of getting inflation down has begun and it's begun in the goods sector, which is about a quarter percent. Uh, quarter of our economy still quote the reality is we're going to react to the data so if we continue to get for example strong labor market reports or higher inflation reports it may well be the case that we have to do more and raise rates more than is priced in now you scroll down here this guy says that being said the market is not as scared of cpi reports anymore as the annual rate of inflation has fallen for six months in a row said brian overby senior market strategist at ally the market used to be so intently nervous about cpi and i think that's potentially one of the negative things going into this that the market's didn't sell off today believe it or not i would be a lot more bullish on tomorrow if the markets were down one percent today because the market's rallying 1% into potentially the first higher CPI report in six months, right? Where CPI stopped falling, it actually went up. You don't have as much of that cushion. I would feel a lot more comfortable if the S&P was at 405 right now rather than 412 where it's currently. Yeah, at least that's my personal opinion. That downside move would have given you a little bit of cushion. Now... If we go ahead and take a look at this so part of this article is, is what i just said acknowledging that cpi has given us some of our biggest rallies and some of our largest um drops right it says a hotter than expected inflation reading on tuesday could mark a turning point in the equity market's expectations for inflation and interest rates with quote far-reaching implications said michael j kramer founder of mott capital management kramer thinks markets have been in quote a fantasy land and that investors don't appear to be uh greatly concerned about the coming cpi report despite warnings from various parts of the markets now on the other hand the Federal Reserve Bank of Cleveland, they put out their own estimates for inflation, and they actually tend to be pretty reliable. So if you look right here, this is inflation month over month percentage change. They have their estimates for January as well as February. What you want to watch is January because, right, we're in February. So the previous month is what we are being reported on, which is January. Headline CPI, they're expecting that 
to have went up by 0.65%. If you take a look at the expectations that we just went over in the beginning of this video, the market's expectations for inflation is a positive 0.4%. So you're expecting uh, like almost 50% higher, or I should say the Cleveland Fed is expecting almost a 50% higher headline inflation rate month over month than what the markets are currently expecting. Okay. If you go ahead and look at core CPI, the Cleveland Fed is expecting 0.46%. If we take a look at core uh, CPI month over month, the markets are currently expecting 0.3%. Last month's reading was 0.4%. So the Cleveland Fed is actually expecting the, head, the, the headline inflation rate, obviously, to go up a lot more than market expectations, but as well the core inflation rate month over month to go up more than market expectations and to actually go up more than what we've seen last month. So no longer a deceleration, but an acceleration. So for those reasons, that's not such a good sign. Now, headline readings for uh, January, just the year over year number, the Cleveland Fed, Fed is expecting uh, about six and a half percent. Market expectations have us at at six point three percent. So again, higher expectations from the Cleveland Fed, and then core CPI at about five and a half percent as well, five point six percent. If you want to be technical, and markets are expecting five point four percent, which again, Cleveland Fed is expecting a higher number. So the Cleveland Fed is expecting higher numbers than the markets all across the board. And if the Cleveland Fed is correct, or if the Cleveland Fed is being Hopefully not, but too uh, dovish like, right? Maybe the numbers come in super hot. Maybe the core inflation rate comes in at 0.5% or 0.6%. That would be a nightmare for markets. And that would totally tra change the trend of this stock market in 2023 and could trigger a very big sell-off. Now, on the other hand, like I said, some investors are positioning for that upside move and it you're already expecting quite a bit, right? Last month's inflation rate headline number was 0.1%. You're expecting 0.4%. It's not like you're expecting a small increase. You're expecting a large increase. Core inflation month over month, that's where I have the real issue here. They're expecting a deceleration still. So those are my concerns. What kind of implications this could have for the markets? I don't necessarily think it would take us back to like, lows for 2022 uh, or you know this 350 level uh but i do think on a worst case scenario it could definitely send you down to about 375 that would be the next level that i would be watching you are in a bit of a cup and handle formation that tends to be a positive uh formation so you do have that going for the s p you had a strong day today uh, which potentially could be a leading indicator to a strong day tomorrow but my base case scenario is really for the S&P to go to about $400 uh, potentially tomorrow, but throughout the rest of this week. And given this rally that we've seen today, for the S&P to go to $400, that would be a drop of about 3%. So I do think that is the most likely outcome for the rest of this week. But if you can't tell by now, getting through this whole video, nobody knows. Not a person. There's people over here, people over here. It's not like we're all expecting inflation to come down. We're not all expecting inflation, uh, you know, to go higher. So there's a lot of 50-50 back and forth going on right here. And that does, I think, set you up for more volatility because someone's going to be wrong. And odds are someone is going to be wrong in a big way. Guys, so that is all for this video. In the case that the markets do rally tomorrow, I would target that 420 level. I don't think inflation is going to come in as a really good beat. So I, I, I don't think like 430 is really an option. I think you could see, you know, a 1.9% a day tomorrow, a positive day. If inflation is slightly better than expectations, almost a 2% day uh, to get us back to 420. But again, valuations come into question at that point. If earnings don't grow 7% like we're expecting in 2023, 
markets are richly valued at where they are currently trading at guys so that is going to be all for this video i do want you guys to comment down below let me know your expectations for inflation are you in the camp that inflation is going higher or in the camp that inflation is going lower i'm actually going to run a poll on the channel because i want to hear your guys's uh, actual opinions and i want to see the vote on paper because tomorrow it's going to have big implications for 2023. Thank you guys for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, especially if you made it to the end of this video. And if you learned something, you like my perspective, or you just want to stay up to date with big market events and data and catalysts, hit that subscribe button. Thank you guys for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.